Namaste students, welcome to part 3 of Water Resources of India. In this video, we will be talking about modes of irrigation, canals, tube wells and multipurpose projects which are used by people to irrigate their fields. As you know, many methods have been applied by people, they have been used by people for irrigating their fields. Primitive methods, we have discussed wells and tanks. This video will talk about inundation canals and then modern methods of irrigation which will include tube wells, perennial canals and multipurpose projects. Canals are water bodies constructed from the end of a river which transports water to far off places. In your topographical map also you had a canal in D by 10 second quadrant and uh, one canal under construction in D by 7 third quadrant. Canals are of two types, inundation canals and perennial canals. Inundation canals as you can see in this picture, it's a canal which is dug from the river and it carries water to the field. So the farmer is plowing in the field and uh, there is a straight line which is the canal which makes the water reach the farms. These canals are also known as flood water canals. They have water in them only when the river is in flood. So if the river does not flood, these canals would not have water. These canals are solely dependent on rainfall. These canals do not have any regulating system on their heads like uh, weirs. Weirs are uh, uh, gates which are placed on the canal to stop and allow water to flow into the canal. So they are systems which are not regulated. Many of these canals are today being converted into perennial canals so that water can be made available throughout the year. Most of these canals are now found near the Satlaj river in Punjab. This is how an inundation canal used to be dug in the past. You have a river flowing with two embankments at a particular place on the embankment a cut is made through which the river when it is in flood the water transfers into the canal and then the canal takes the water to the nearby fields. Advantages of canal irrigation very easily built you just cut a, and a part of the embankment of a river and you have a canal ready very cheap to construct very useful in controlling floods. So if rivers are in flood and there are lots of canals which emerge from the river, the flooding can be controlled to a great extent. However, canals have, inundation canals have some disadvantages as well, like the uncertainty of water supply. Only when the river floods, water is available in these canals. One more disadvantage of inundation canal is only the land which are lower than the canal can be irrigated as the water can only flow from a higher ground to lower ground. These canals are only useful during floods so that is another disadvantage. Now we will look at some modern methods of irrigation which are more reliable. They can provide water for irrigation whenever needed. They are easy to operate. Most of them operate through electricity and they can irrigate a much larger area because water can be pushed towards the fields with more force. <coughs> People use diesel driven motor or by electric motor in order to irrigate through modern methods. Perennial canals are one of the ways in which irrigation is practiced. As you can see these canals are very well made and they can transport lots and lots of water from the rivers to the areas where they are needed and they have water throughout the year. This is how perennial canals are generally made. There is a feeder canal which takes the water from the reservoir to the areas where it is required. Advantages of perennial canals, they are perennial source of irrigation, they have water throughout the year. The water is rich in sediments, so this also makes the soil fertile. 
although the initial cost of making canals perineal canals is very high but in the long run over a long period of time the costs become very less it becomes very cheap some disadvantages of perineal canals if the canals are unlined that is they are not cemented on either side there can be the problem of water logging on the sides of the canal sometimes these canals may have the problem of soil salinization or re that means too much of silt mixes into the water and if areas near the canal have water logging problem they can become marshy and become breeding ground for many germs many bacteria or different types of mosquitoes which may result in various diseases in india perineal canals and inundation canals which are now mostly converted into perineal canals they are practiced all over the country but maximum use of canals is in the north india because there are perineal rivers that flow through north india in south india the usage of canals is minimum some of the canals that are found in north india are ganga canal made on the ganga river nangal dam canal built on the satluj river Indira Gandhi canal which is again built on the Satluj river and it carries water through the Thar desert up to Jaisalmer in Rajasthan Chambal project canal which is constructed on the Chambal river some canal systems in south india include Godavari canal Tungabhadra dam canal Hirakud dam canal which is built on the river Mahanadi Periyar and Mettur canals these are built on the Kaveri river Another modern method of irrigation is tube wells as you can see here these are bore wells that are dug inside the earth and they pull water through electric motors and uh, transfer the water to fields conditions required for tube wells to be practiced in any area there should be sufficient supply of ground water the ground water table should be high electricity should be should be supplied regularly and cheaper so that it does not become costly to irrigate the region around the tube wells must be fertile and productive otherwise it's a waste of water and crops may not grow well in india tube wells are mostly found in indo gangetic plain because the ground water table is high advantages of tube wells they can irrigate larger area very large areas can be irrigated as water can be pumped with greater force during drought when the rivers become dry or the lakes become dry ground water can be used for irrigation farmers which have small land holdings it is suited for them as it occupies very less space disadvantages of tank irrigation if the tube wells are dug near the coastal areas the salty sea water may enter into the ground and make the wells brackish excessive use of tube wells may also lower down the ground water table as seen here as i told you before in india tube wells is mostly used for irrigation in up bihar punjab haryana and west bengal because these are the states through which rivers pass and so there is plenty of ground water available under the ground last method by which irrigation is done is by setting up multi purpose projects also known as dams these projects are known as multi purpose because they serve so many purposes like they can store water for irrigation in the dams you generate electricity by allowing the water to fall from a greater height through the dams dams can also control flood excess water from rivers can be transferred into the dams because there is plenty of water around the dam afforestation can be done so that flood control also takes place soil conservation can take place because of construction of dams the dams can also provide drinking water to people in the nearby areas the canals which are made from the dams they can be used for navigation 
within the dam area where water is present pisciculture can be developed that is fish rearing and these dams become recreational center you might have gone to the aji dam or the nyari dam during rainy season some of the dams that are built in india are discussed here the bhakranangal dam is the biggest dam and the oldest dam of india built immediately after independence it is built on the satluj river the states which get benefit for irrigation from this dam are punjab haryana and west uttar pradesh the main purpose of setting up this dam was irrigation provided to the nearby areas the methon dam which is a part of the damodar valley corporation project this dam is built on the river damodar which was earlier known as the sorrow of bengal as it used to flood every year and cause lot of destruction the states which are irrigated by this multi purpose project is west bengal and as i told you the main purpose of constructing this dam was to control floods the hirakud dam built on the river mahanadi is the longest dam in asia it is an indigenous project built by the orissa state government so orissa gets the maximum benefit of this dam the main purpose of construction of this dam was irrigation as well as flood control in the mahanadi river